Alice Dale here on BBC Upload on BBC Radio London. Now, I'm so excited because I have two guests in the room with me who submitted their magic to BBC Upload. And as a result, I said, come into my show. Let's have a chat. I want to dig a bit deeper into what you do because they both have their fingers in so many pies. Um, it's Moses Sabandake. He's a filmmaker, rapper, legend has loads of things that he's getting into he's on the comedy circuit as well um so i will let him articulate to you exactly where he sees himself this year because there's so many different creative things that he's getting into um directing acting just being an all-round marvel then zoe mafuz an award-winning actress screenwriter content creator who's doing the rounds on tiktok i think there's over forty thousand of you following her stuff as well so it's intense you you know they're, they're both doing bits making a bit of a name for themselves on the creative circuit um i think i'll start by playing this now this caught zoe by surprise she said alice you could have given me a breakdown about what we're going to be talking about um well it is about her creativity and as a result i found this it's her real um and it has all of her amazing work that she's been doing just take a little taste uh, of of zoe right here listen i've just spent a year and a half of my life in prison i've lost everything my home my job my whole future so maybe now you've got a taste of what it's like to know that you're innocent and yet still have your whole life destroyed Oh, <laughs> the drama, the drama lava. I love it. I was um, feeling it. Like, even in audio, it just felt so yeah, intense. Was, yeah. it, it, it did. I was, my breath was taken away there. Um, <laughs> Zoe, just tell everybody what that was from. Oh, my God. That was from a clip we shot at the actor studio in Pinewood Studio here in the UK. We had an amazing director and I had a blast. I graduated from the actor studio, which is the place where they shoot the Marvel movies. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I love this. We're taking a step around the, the creative quarters, the studios um, uh, around London, and, and that's where your work is taking you as well. I have to shout out to Moses as well, because um, we, we're going to be, I think film's going to be like a nice crossover here for both of you, because you've both yeah. had your your, your, your training and, and um, dipped your fingers into that reel. But um, Moses, you also have a massive passion for music. Um, yeah. You've got an amazing uh, pace in which you perform. I just love listening to the to the way you perform. It's oh, a very fantastic. unique style. And you've got an album on the way, uh, yeah. The Meditations of uh, Mozzie Mutant, which I love. We need to unwrap <laughs> what that all means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just imagining you as like a Ninja Turtle. Right? <laughs> what That's going to be the album cover yeah. now. You've just um, <laughs> given me inspiration right there. Well, what's, a, what's a Mozzie Mutant? So that's the... Um, it's going to be deep now, isn't it? And I'm there calling it a Ninja Turtle. Like. <laughs> it's no, it's exactly no. that. It, it, yeah. it, it's actually that was one of the inspirations because I was a huge kind of Ninja Turtle fan when I was younger. No way! Yeah, so I oh, adopted the music. See, I read name. the room. I read exactly. the room. Exactly. I thought you did research here. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I thought you went deep into my childhood. But no, that I was a huge fan. And yeah, so I adopted Mute, Mozzie Mutant as my rap alias um, that I've been doing for the past kind of like decade or so and been dropping albums. I've performed in the BBC, like one extra and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I just keep on making music because that's a passion of mine to yeah. be a creative. But um. Yeah, in all fields, essentially. And so yeah. you should, because you're brilliant. Just tell everyone a little bit about um, sort of your childhood growing up, where uh, whereabouts in London um, you 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 know you call home. Uh, so I grew up in um, South London, Battersea. Mm -hmm. um, Lovely, that's yeah. cool. That's a cool yeah. place to grow up. <laughs> yeah, for of my entire life, I, I went to school in Putney. Um, yeah, so Battersea is kind of like a big part of my creative um, kind of like. Um, outset and stuff like even so i'm producing a short film called uh battersea ghoul busters which is like a horror comedy film about some teenagers who try to fight like a crazy ghoul in battersea and <laughs> stuff like that so yeah we're basically producing that with the community and having the community really involved mm -hmm. um basically in that way so yeah and battersea the battersea we know now is uh you know it's thriving in terms of the way that they've really invested into some of their venues and they've completely um Re reinvented the, the power station and yeah. everything they've done there. Yeah. But growing up in Battersea, what was that like? What was Battersea to you when you were sort of 10, 12, getting into the creative arts? 
well there and it didn't feel like there was money there mm. when i was doing, growing up um which is interesting but it was good that like now i'm in my 30s now i'm seeing it kind of being rejuvenated so the battersea power station i just remember growing up it was going to be so many things at one point it was going to be like a theme park it was going to be like a uh, a big cinema they're going to do a rest fields there but eventually they decided to bring it into something kind of like interesting um but i think this is also going to be talking about maybe like the, the short film Battersea Goobusters is mm-hmm. talking about parts of Battersea that's been forgotten. Um, so yeah, we're going to mix that together and really try to tell stories of different people, essentially. Amazing. And, yeah. and and an area of London which deserves recognition for uh, for for the the place that it is because I think sometimes everything goes very central, doesn't it, with mm-hmm. films? And we see you know the Tower of London as the backdrop to so many of our uh, our especially our fighting scenes. We put James <laughs> yeah. Bond on, you know, that's like MR, MI5. You've got the London Eye, but actually to kind of dip in um, to the community of Battersea will be lovely. You'll have to come back when when that drops. Yeah, yeah, I can even bring the writer and director. Oh, hundred well. percent. He's, he's I, a Battersea person as well, so he'll be really good to come in and chat about it super yeah. well look we're only scraping the surface with you moses uh moses uh moses Sabandike, who submitted his music to bbc upload and i actually then said i'm really sorry but we can't really do music because that is bbc introducing I know. um <laughs> but then i did a little stop i was like hang on there's there's more than meets the eye here because I'm hearing about Moses's music, but I'm seeing online that he's working in film and he he he's you know got a, a, a real taste for comedy as well. So we'll unwrap some of those things. But Zoe, I have to bring you into the conversation. Zoe Mafu. Oh my god, I felt like I was like forgotten at some point. I was like, what is this whole Battersea fuss all about? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, Moses is here solo now. <laughs> no, but but for you, so tell me about your uh, relationship with London because there's oh various god. points that you're in London, but. Uh, this year but then there's a lot of time where you're not so come on let's 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 unwrap who zoe is and why zoe is living her best bougie life yes, flying here there and everywhere <laughs> girl slay girl slay <laughs> wherever i go i just look at some pretty girls and i'm like girl slay period <laughs> word just, i don't know any of these people i'm just excited to see them this is why you got loads of people following on tiktok because they're like this Probably. girl doesn't care she just yes. she's a girl's girl she's supporting us all <laughs> go on so what are you doing between london and where else? Where 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 Paris, you spend your time? Paris. Oh, Love I'm that. so basic. I just heard <laughs> that there was a street in Paris called the Street of the Croissant. And I was wow. like, I need to live there. Oh, well, if it was the street of the chocolate croissant, then I'm there. <laughs> oh, chocolate. I'm, I'm there every day, babes. Don't you worry. No, but so, so Paris is is, ho- is is your first home? Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to be moving to London. I'm in the process of moving right okay. now. Okay. I wonder what this situation was. Yes. Got, so, mum, how does mum feel about her baby making the full-time move to London? How do oh, you feel? She's she's excited. <laughs> she's a bit scared too. She's like, we need to see the creepy neighborhoods oh. to know where you need not to go oh. because I'm gonna be worried. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and next thing you know, you've got the t-shirt on that says J'adore London. <laughs> yes, exactly. The London yeah. hat. The London hat. We saw it. Yeah. We saw it yeah. at the Camden Market. And she's like, is this too much? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got the gear. I'm in full like tourist mode. I love it. But I'm even such a sucker for those. I I sometimes go and I get little like London buses on key rings as well. Oh, and I, I get that. Yeah. They're beautiful. I, I get it. I can't get enough. I can't get enough. Look, yeah. Zoe, so for you, where did your world begin in the creative arts? Where did you start? Where did creativity start for you growing oh up? Oh my God. I want to say my mom had to do, had to do it because of oh. Tex Avery. Oh. I watched so much of that growing up and American sitcoms. I'm sorry, you guys, but I love Miranda. Oh, yeah. All love, right. Yes. I love Miranda. Yes. I love oh. Father Ted's. I love all of your stuff. Everything that is weird and absurd and quirky, I am into it. Did you I watch am. Fleabag? I didn't. You I didn't. heard it was a psychological thing, and I'm. Um, I mean, yeah. I see enough twisted people in my daily life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to see more of them. It's similar vibes to Miranda in the way that so Phoebe Waller Bridges. She uh, she looks at the camera mm. and does a lot of pieces to camera, doesn't she? Like yeah. Moses, you'll be familiar. It's yeah. like she sort of it's quite she kind of involves the audience so she'll be talking to moses and you'll be like i don't know moses where are you going next friday could it be could it be thursday because i can make thursday is he going to do thursday we never know you know like it's it's, it's very clever it's like the th- what's the terminology moses is it the third no the fourth wall, the fourth Breaking wall the fourth yeah wall. She, she breaks the fourth wall quite yeah. a lot and it's it's very kind of like experimental and it it, it kind of like um 
was like Miranda's crazy sister in terms mm. of that thing or the darker kind of part of mm. it. Um, so I think that's what really resonated with the audience yeah. and stuff. But if you love quirky stuff, I think you'd love Fleabag Williams. Right, you've got to add it now. Yes. Tell us about, are there any French sitcoms that you recommend? Come on, oh we need an God. exchange. I am so sorry, you guys. I am going to... <laughs> <laughs> Is it a big fat no? <laughs> I'm like, I didn't grow up with that part of the French culture. I am really yeah. into the cakes, though. Okay. Into the pastries. And the pastries. I am very <gasps> peaky. And that's over here. We say French kiss. Yes. Or was it chef's kiss? Yeah, I think no, French kiss is like that. You know what? I will back you up. That's I will back you, back you I, up. Right, I promise you, I don't make out with my croissants. All right, I'm not there like snogging <laughs> my pan of chocolate. No one would blame you. No, yeah. no one yeah, would yeah, blame exactly, you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, yeah. Oh okay, my so God. Different, yeah, different things. Different things. Okay, so we're not snogging um, pastries, but we're loving them. And I just use the word snog. He, I can't remember the last time I heard that word. Uh, I've given myself. I like egg. posh. 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 Posh spice. Posh. Yeah, everything that is posh. Ah, it okay. is so British. Yes. It yeah, is the definition of British for me. I always feel because Britain has two sides to it. You've got the posh, but you've also got really laddish kind of things. And oh, you do? Yeah, it's two different sides, really. Yeah. And oh, stuff, goodness. Which is very, very, very interesting. Yeah. Moses, what was culture like growing up in your house? Did you have influences from other cultures or are you very London? Uh, no, so I come from a Ugandan family. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, my parents came, uh, immigrated here from Uganda in the early 90s. So we had a mixture of Ugandan culture um, that was all up at home. But um, also growing up with kind of like South London culture. Um, it's always such a mixture, isn't it? Anomaly yeah, of different yeah, cultures. Definitely, I mean, my definitely. friends will go, you know, I, they talk about growing up and they say when they go to friends' house, it ha friends' houses, it's a different melting pot of culture. You know, every, mm. every, every dinner table looks completely different. In yeah. terms of food, is the food good in your family? Tell me now. Oh, it's lovely. Oh. It's lovely. You've got um, stuff like chip, uh, chapati, mm. um, matoke. Um, those are the t uh, particular meals that come from Uganda as well. Um, but yeah, we mix it with British meals as well. You lovely. know what I mean? It's, it's Any panache class in the mix? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> are you more then, is it when, when you're sort of um, thinking about Ugandan influences, mm. is it more main meals or do you have like um, kind of specialities with desserts as well? It's more main meals, yeah. so like you would have them talking, and then that could be like mixed with different kind of soups or or stews, essentially. Um, so yeah, it's main meal. But chapati though, that's like obviously a flatbread, yeah, yeah. essentially that could be used as a a. a a dessert essentially so can, yeah can you tell this one likes food i'm alice with the appetite that's my <laughs> rapping name that's my rap name my street name yes uh, girl <laughs> word so um, um zoe tell me about your studying and 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 what led you to study film and for that to become such a big part of your life oh my goodness so I don't want to say I was a class clown. I was never. I oh, was the, I was the worst. Clown. I was never a class clown. <laughs> Listen, I was the weird one. The weird one with the gothic style. Okay. In, in the back, just like. Oh, no. She's like that emo, emo music. It, yes, you get it. Paramore? Do you like Paramore? I, I mean. Panic at the Disco? I do like that. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Just, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm more underground. Maybe. Yeah. Is that it? <laughs> he gets it. Yeah. Yeah. Each other. Yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. I was into a group called Blood on the Dance Floor. Oh, wow. So and I have is... a tattoo of them. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's on my ankle. It's from a song called I Refuse to Sink. <laughs> It is very deep. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love the, 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 the tattoo. Do you have lots of tattoos? I have seven. Okay. I hide them so that I look like a good girl. And whenever... Oh, the clean girl look. Everyone's yes. going on about that on TikTok. <laughs> I, I, I can't be the clean... Well, I don't have any facial tattoos, but they're all over my not arms. Not yet. Not, not yet. <laughs> no. I'm too scared of needles, so that's why I can get tattoos. Moses, it's you. not a bad idea, babes. Like, honestly, <laughs> I, I'm awful with needles. I don't know why I signed up. Why I signed up to tats. But anyway. This is why yeah. they all say, <laughs> so you so you enjoy making people laugh. You've got an infectious energy. Oh my god, I love it. And 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 so I guess it it only seemed natural that you had to put social that energy media. into something, yeah, creative and social media. Yeah. And TikTok for you then? When did that start blowing up? Um, I started on TikTok last year. I was actually more of a YouTube girly. I was okay. doing yeah this old side podcast. I was like, I'm gonna change the world. <laughs> gonna explain people what is wrong with society with, with my smart videos. <laughs> and then I saw these people like blowing up on TikTok doing dances, and I was like, why do I bother? Yeah, I could just I could just mime. I don't even need my own voice. I could just it's like musically. It was that yes. wasn't it before TikTok? I can just mm. lip sync and 
get thousands of views. We're popping yes. off. Love yeah. it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Moses, what about you? Where did your love of film come in? And, and music, I guess. What came first for you? Um, it actually, music came first. And I feel like all my creative kind of endeavours um, evolves from music, essentially. So I used to go to this youth club in Brixton called Raw Material. Yeah. And they had like a class called Verbal Elevation, which was like a rap kind of teaching class. Um, but I kind of learned that that taught me about structure in terms of songwriting mm -hmm. but then translated to structure within screenwriting um, and it evolved from there and it eventually became film you know being my main kind of like income essentially like um i started with film i actually worked here at the bbc many years ago mm -hmm. i did the apprenticeship here and then i moved on to doing other filmmaking stuff for other people mm -hmm. and then producing for other people producing short films and features um so yeah no it's 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 been a great journey essentially over the past 15 years now for sure and yeah. and do you think because everybody and i think we're all uh uh, uh start a prime example of this we all have fingers in different pies whether mm. it's tiktok it's acting it's music it's yeah. uh rapping it's writing i mean lyrically you're uh, you're lyrically set i'm listening and it's i think that you could easily be an amazing spoken word artist as well because the two intertwine yeah. and we can't ignore that i think yeah. there's so much yeah, poetry yeah, yeah. and soul that goes into to, to rap music and and vice versa yeah but yeah. Um, you just have such a gorgeous flow and I think next time you're on we'll, we'll, we can have a cheeky listen with a music <laughs> show but you know we can we can do a little little demo yeah, or maybe yeah, a live performance and I'll pass it as Spoken Word. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. <laughs> um, tell me about some of the recognition that you've got then um, with, with some of your stuff because here you know you've directed comedy sketches that have gone viral accumulated 100 million views across social media tell me about that moses yeah. what's going on here yeah you two I, I are wish, like put me to shame <laughs> no but i wish i was more like zoe because i did my tiktok but the video got ripped off my tiktok and oh. then shared on other people's platforms oh. so it got the millions of views and yeah, people yeah. were loving it and liking it and but it Remind didn't me really what that video was that was a video that it was kind of like making fun of like how hollywood looks at um different types of stereotypes right so mainly stereotypes of like arab films and stuff like that yeah, yeah. um so yeah it was making fun of those how um yeah like it, it's a bit weird and they do kind of like weird stereotypes and yes stuff. instead of doing the, the research and exactly knowledge. that yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah having the substance behind their characters yeah. and yeah and exactly that um yeah and it got kind of blew up it was being shared on different people's different celebrities shared it as well and stuff like that um yeah and other p pieces of content and i'm working on other people's content as well so i've directed kind of like sketches here at the bbc as well yes. so and you've had a short yeah. film that won short film of uh, the short film of the month award and was screened at the bfi and you won yeah. the channel Four values award for your film distance uh which is just amazing have you yeah. finished um you've you've wrapped up with the uh the film and the bafta film and teller uh, the the film and television school oh yeah that, yeah, 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 I've, yeah, yeah i i left that in um 2020 i actually okay, yeah. had my graduation and then two oh, days wow. later the pandemic happened so, so. you got that out of the way you're yeah. able to study with, <laughs> yeah exactly so i didn't do any of the zoom thing but i didn't get any work because the whole industry collapsed for yes. like one year but um no it's all coming back now so um currently co-producing a feature film called uh spectrum Mm -hmm. and um we're about to finish up filming that it's it's about it's this one's a drama so it's not necessarily a comedy mm -hmm. um and it's about um two people who are trying to maneuver through the justice system one person who's experienced um uh sa sexual assault and another yeah. person who's been falsely accused and okay. how that differently kind of like different parts of the the justice system deals with that essentially and is it based on a true story or fiction it's bit yeah it's based on a true story wow, okay. um so I've been helping the writer, director, Genovo, to get that off the, the, the ground. So, and yeah, it's been once, intense. And once that's wrapped, where um, you, can you tell us what you're hoping, what, what your plans are for that film? Um, are you taking it to festivals first or have you got a set idea of where it will then output, where it will broadcast? Yeah, so we're, t we're planning to take Spectrum out to the festivals mm -hmm. or so to the the Cannes Film Festival in France and the uh, Venice. You two are gonna link up now. Yeah, hopefully I'm trying to. <laughs> we are, we are. <laughs> I, I need to get that demo to get into a film. We're gonna definitely work with each other. Um, but yeah, so essentially, um, get it out and get a full cinema release out into the cinemas and eventually get to streaming. Um, but yeah, it has been a long and hard road, um, but we're nearly there essentially. 
and well, it's, it's fantastic it's so lovely to sort of follow that timeline and Zoe um, you are you're a little bougie girl with awards too this one over here right she's, hey, she's bringing give all the awards Zoe <laughs> <laughs> you've got the best actress awards in various film festivals across True. the globe for your monologue performances yes um, tell us a little bit more about that oh my god so I hate people <laughs> Gee, it's such it's such a creative thing yeah. to hate people and just love your own space I yeah. think that's why TikTok is it's so you yeah, can just film in our room and be, be weirdos and we don't have to do it with anyone else just <laughs> scream me yeah it's the hardest thing actually to do a monologue because it sounds so easy you're like oh I put up a camera and I do my thing but then you kind of like miss the other person like mm. eye contact yeah. you kind of mm. miss that presence so it's actually such a hard exercise and i got my stuff like broadcasted everywhere mm -hmm. and i was like this is such a blessing because i feel so awkward doing this <laughs> like just getting mad at myself like how could you do this to me like no one is there yeah no yeah, one yeah. It's just my neighbors yeah. being like what's happening again and yeah, yeah. <laughs> knocking on the wall yeah yeah, and, yeah get, get kind of is, there, is everything all right next door zoe <laughs> yeah I just was, doing my stuff don't worry about yeah. it ça va <laughs> oh no wait is that and you no how do you say how are you in french i've completely forgotten um yeah it's ça va, ça va? or they can say what's yeah. going on which is qu'est-ce qui se passe qu'est-ce qui se passe oh. ah where okay well we'll oh get into the french I, I have french cousins and i put them all to shame because i can it, so i went to france once when? For a, so i've been a couple of times but the last time i well the first time i met my wider family that i hadn't met before it was when i was studying at school so it was i could understand everything in the room they were making jokes we were in Sir chevalier and they were making oh f um, cheese fondue and wow. uh, with the nuns in the mountains <laughs> i felt like i was in a, in a whole sort of i don't know i was like uh, in the, with the Von Trapp family, although they're Swiss, but oh, I don't know, they're not not in, in the French Alps. But, um, but it was it was just so wonderful to have that taste of really authentic sort Aww. of you know those French roots and and I could understand what they were saying at the table, but I couldn't really speak much. It, so, mm. but, but I feel but you can understand though. understand not as much now. Maybe girl, what could, happened? Yeah. I know, I know. Girl. You need me in your life. I've come to Paris. <laughs> Paris, we that's, go. That's <laughs> like me with Ugandan as well. I, <laughs> really? I understand it, but I, Is it I, to... I can't speak it. What about well, writing in Ugandan? No, nope. I can only, only understand it. It's They call it receptive bilingual. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so you can understand it. I think it's because I left Uganda when I was one. So okay. maybe I left when I was able to understand it. You're just it. a baby. Yeah. yeah. I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, yeah. I can't speak it, but I'm going to try. I'm going to yeah. learn. You know what I mean? So is Uganda still close to your heart? Do you think? You know, have you been back since you moved to London, or or do you? You know, is it is it a place you would like to go back to? Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to go. It's just so expensive to get back get get back there. So the last time I've been was just before the pandemic in 2019. Right. Um. But yeah, no, I, I definitely want to go back because yeah. it does kind of influence my creative mm, energy sure. all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on, man. It cannot be more expensive than London. <laughs> no, that's, good. that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> We're in a cost of living crisis. <laughs> no, it's, the thing is, it's expensive getting there. But when you get there, it's like, oh, OK, yeah, it's all right. But oh. yeah. <laughs> it's so lovely to, to, to have you both in the studio. I feel, and it, it, I feel like we need way more than than an hour because we, we're just scraping the surface um but look uh after billy eilish we're just going to get into where people can follow you and also advice that you've both got for other uploaders um you know how they can get their their toes into the water because you've gone from class clown you know to <laughs> to um award-winning actress we've got a uh, sort of rapper to um someone who's really studied their craft and is now behind navigating a, a feature film so this is yeah. this is you know you, you've really followed your hearts and followed your passions and i think there's people that be thinking this is all well and good but how do i get to where they both are so we'll do that next but here's a new one from billy i just love her and she is probably after sabrina carpenter my second girl crush <laughs>
the same old sound bites. We are the best choice for the people of this country. Pre-arranged photo calls. And struggling to give a straight answer. I mean, what I'm trying to say is we will, must do more. What do you want to hear from those who need to win your vote? In an election year, this is your chance to share what matters to you and put it to the wannabe politicians who want your vote. Just go to bbc.co.uk slash London. Where you can see our full terms and privacy notice. Your voice, your, voice. your vote. The closing date is 1st of July. BBC Radio London. London. Yep, as you heard there, this show is very much about handing the microphone over to you, BBC Upload, uh, discovering the things that matter to you across London. So as the general election approaches, this really is your chance to tell us about issues, stories that matter to you, and what might influence who you vote for. So through your voice, your vote, which is a good thing, I think. It's it's sort of a chance for you to really come through with what you feel about London, the state of London, what you'd like to see. Um, you can share your story and tell us why it matters to you, your family, your friends, your local community. And we'll be covering these stories across the BBC in the run-up to polling day. So to find out more, it's bbc.co.uk slash London. Tell us about your story, why it matters to you, and what politicians need to do. What you know, Who's not doing enough and why? And what would you like to to see this is your London and it's your voice your vote now at bbc.co.uk slash London so come on we want to hear from you um, and if politics isn't your thing it should be because there's been crazy um, sort of statistics about young people and the numbers around younger people voting and I think people just really want to encourage the next generation to to uh, come forward and speak about their London but if creativity is also your thing then this is a show for you it's bbc.co.uk slash upload to submit your stuff I'm with two brilliant creatives who have just done that and time flies when you're talented oh this CV these CVs that we've been going through um, I've got uh, Moses Sabandake and Zoe Mafuz. Um Moses is a filmmaker rapper a comedian as well can yeah, i say yeah yeah, yeah. Com- comedy is the main wheelhouse that yeah, I, I, yeah. I work in so like yeah i i was at the bbc comedy festival yeah you're in you, scotland you know I mean? yeah, yeah and living uh, his best life you two love to travel I, <laughs> can you take me with you next time yeah yeah <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> and and you've also um t- you know visited the eighth floor um one extra as well and, yes, and yeah. brought your magic to there as well so yeah, I used to I used to work there many moons ago, and I've also had opportunities to perform on there as well. So, yeah, coming back here is very nostalgic to me, and and all that stuff. So, yeah. And Zoe, I mean, it's fantastic those those opportunities, and it is all about grasping those opportunities and not saying no to yourself. Zoe, um, what would you? Is there one? If there's one thing that you could conquer by the end of the year, what would it be? Oh my goodness, I want to say the fourth thirty on the thirty list. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, I would sound like, like a brat, so I'm no. just gonna say, I was just gonna say, you know, be happy, love everyone. Um, you know. I love you, I love you. She's the queen. I love her. No, but I, I don't think we should sell ourselves short and undersell it. Do, you know, Forbes 30 under 30. Why not? Why not? So you're move. You're in the process of moving your life to London. Yes. Whereabouts absolutely. in London are you looking at? Uh, so Wait, I'm going to yeah. be in Covent Garden. Oh, lovely. Oh, wow. I oh am she does like there. the posh life, didn't she? Yeah. Oh, darling. <laughs> posh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm going to be actually doing an MA in screenwriting. Oh, oh. amazing. So Where I'm are going you doing to be that? Uh, London Film School. Oh, super. They love me. They said, uh, we don't even need the rest of the cohort. We just need you because you're <laughs> way too talented, too gifted. Yeah, Moses, yeah, one to one. Moses yeah. is here like, hold your horses, girl, right? There's two, <laughs> there's two people behind the camera. Do I, say, do I sense the collaboration between you two? Well, I think you do. Yeah, Moses. it's serendipitous. Yeah, yeah, we've met. We can hook up and do so. Yes, hey. let's do it. I think you should because I think there's just so much talent here in this room, and I think you know you you've got my, you know I don't know it's that that level of energy, and then Moses has got that that creativity, but he's really good at curving it, and there's a lot going on behind the eyes of Moses. I feel like he's like he's he's reading the room, he's letting us, you know, where is guinea pigs, and he's reading the room, and he's like, right, oh, actually, I think I can deal with these gals. I think I can. Oh, no, <laughs> oh look. Um, it's been so lovely having you. Time flies when you're talented because we've spent, um, you know, the, the the last 40 minutes or so really unpicking those CVs. I feel like we haven't got to all of the layers, but that's why you're both going to be coming back. Is September your return date? Fingers crossed for moving 
to yes. London to Covent Garden. I will be there. If you don't wait for me at the end of the Eurostar, I will make I will make a fuss. <laughs> I will record this on TikTok and tag yeah. you in. How do I say I promise in French? I promise. Je promets. Je promets. Tu promets. Je promets. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Girl snake. <laughs> Girl. Uh, yes, I'm French. I'm, well, I am French. I'm not lying, but I'm, I'm disgraceful <laughs> because I, can't, I, I, I do not have the, the, the French tongue. And my mother can speak mm. it fluently. I'm like, come on, mom. Where, where was the bilingual household? You I'm gonna have a down. word. I'm yeah. gonna have a word with your mother. Yeah, she won't. First she thing. won't. She won't let. She won't cross your path. She 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 doesn't want to get told off by you. I can tell. Oh like, really? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Moses, look, you you know you've weaved in and out of um, some really fantastic opportunities. What's your advice to to anybody who wants to get their foot in the door of the film set? I think being um, uh, self sufficient basically. Because um, all the films that I've done over the 15 years, 90% of them I've self-funded. I've probably gotten maybe at most maybe £400 from the Roundhouse. But everything else, which is like up, up, upwards to the five figures, I've self-funded. So in this game, I think you have to be self-sufficient and just actually just go for it and take risks, essentially. I love that. And it's so true. It's yeah. following that passion. And if you really care about it and it's something you really want to do, um, then just try and weave it around that, that cog of life because you never know where it might take you. And here, you both are, here you are back at the BBC. You've got a bit of the BBC, <laughs> BBC boy here, all right? He's, he's, he's been doing it for a while now. Um, so, and Zoe, what's your advice to anybody who wants to follow your footsteps, get in front of the camera? Um, I want to say perseverance, it always pays off. So just in general, working, doing your own stuff, creating your own work, do not wait for someone to call you, just do your own stuff. And also follow Alice Dale yeah. on Instagram, yeah. like all of her posts, share her videos. If you don't do that, no one at the BBC will care about your existence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got my hat, girl. I'll be yes. your cheerleader, you can be mine. This is a beautiful relationship. I'm going to be your PR now. <laughs> You're both so brilliant. Thank you so much for, for, for gracing me with your presence. I feel like um, there's so much to learn from you both. And I'm in awe. I'm in awe of your energy and your um, determination to, to follow those projects that, you, that you've that you been cracking. And um, a feature film on the way. Yeah. A big move to London for Zoe. Um, Moses, Savanda Kay and Zoe Mafuz, thank you so much for joining me. Um, just shout out where people can find you, follow you. So, um, yeah, if you follow me on uh, Twitter, now known as X, at uh, Mozzie Mutant, so that's M O double Z I E, Mutant, um, everything's there. Super. And Zoe, what about you? You can follow me on TikTok. I have a channel called Les Sautes d'Humeur de Zoe. Oh, gorgeous. It is so French. Mwah. Zoe's Change of Moods. <laughs> and I have a great community there. My community name is the Baby Cow Community because we love the baby cows. Oh, the baby cow. And I love the baby cows. I'm going to Dorset in July. So I'll look out for some. I'll send you some pictures. Thank you so much for joining me on BBC Upload. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us.
BBC Upload. BBC Upload. The best in new comedy, poetry and spoken word. hour we've had thank you so much to everybody that continues to submit to bbc upload it's bbc introducing coming up next with jess is at um, a big shout out to moses sabanda k a filmmaker rapper comedian and zoe mafuz an award-winning actress screenwriter and content creator but over 40k 40 000 of you calling her stuff and if you've got something that you're making, something you're posting onto socials, I want to hear about it. Submit to me, bbc.co.uk slash upload. And you never know, you might just get an invite to the BBC. Um, it's honestly never too late. And it doesn't matter if you haven't platformed that project before. I want to be your biggest cheerleader, your crazy best mate, and just get your work out there. Um, so please do send it to me. And you never know, you might be able to walk through the doors of the BBC this year and tick that off your bucket list. Um, and if you've enjoyed this hour, you can listen back on BBC Sound. Never feel on the BBC. This is BBC Introducing. BBC Introducing the future of music.